good morning. So uh, my topic is uh, heavier flavor. Uh, this is part of the standard model, and uh, this is plan of my lecture. So to today I just uh, have some introductory lecture, uh, almost without any experimental results. Uh, so I will talk about the place of the flavor of physics in, uh, in the standard model in high energy physics and. Uh, discussed the symmetries which are very important for uh, understanding of uh, the nature of the standard model and uh, beyond and uh, uh, the origin of the quark masses, uh, masses and mixing in the standard model uh, how this is related to CP relation, uh, CK matrix and uh, the, the last thing is uh, unitary triangle so uh, this is a picture of the standard model uh, as we know it now. So we uh, have all this, all this, uh, what is written here corresponds to some uh, terms in the standard model Lagrangian. So you can derive the standard model Lagrangian from this picture. Uh, and Lagrangian is, is much more simple than, than, than this uh, illustration. Uh, but I think that it's more illustrative for understanding how uh, everything is connected uh, in our world and this is not all what we know now so in addition to this certainly there is something which is which lies beyond the standard model and uh, we certainly know that uh, the standard model is not the theory of everything and there are many many phenomena which lie uh, beyond this uh, simple this, this uh, square and uh, in addition to this, uh, we certainly need to, uh, to, to merge uh, everything uh, to, to be combined with astrophysics, with cosmology, and there are a lot of things which are uh, which lies beyond this uh, simple uh, square. And uh, flavor physics lies somewhere here. Uh, it's uh, it's a part of standard model, but. Uh, it's, it's really mysterious part of the standard model because uh, we don't know how uh, how this uh, flavor physics is just connection of uh, all these uh, fermions, probably except for neutrino, which uh, needs special treatment. Uh, how these fermions uh, couple to scales, how how they uh, get their masses uh, from uh, interaction with uh, scalars and. Uh, uh, okay, let's move to the next one uh, uh, to understand this. Uh, because uh, if, it, if it just takes the bosonic uh, part of the standard model, uh, it ca consists only of five free parameters. One of them is uh, has dimension of energy, and this is probably okay because we need some uh, dimension parameter which uh, uh, shows the scale of uh, the theory. And in addition, we have four uh, dimensionless parameters, which are uh, approximately of the same order. So they are of the order of one. And uh, this is quite natural. Moreover, we have a hint that uh, they have some common origin, at least pH constants uh, uh, have uh, some common origin, because if we just look at uh, how they run with energy, uh, we have some point, which is a uh, point of intersection. This is not uh, the picture, which is just standard model, where they don't cross each other, but uh, just the minimal uh, theory uh, over the standard model uh, results uh, that uh, they, they cross somewhere. So it means that uh, these parameters are probably connected to each other. And uh, if, we, if, we, if we now look at the fermionic part of the standard model, the flavor sector, uh, we have a lot of new free parameters, in total uh, 13. Uh, they are all dimensionless, and uh, nine of them are related to the masses of fermions. Uh, uh, this is Yukawa constants. Uh, and uh, in addition, we have four parameters that describe uh, mixing in the quark sectors. Uh, and this huge number of extra free parameters, which are not fixed by theory, uh, is a really a mysterious part uh, of the standard model because we have no idea why we have three generation of fermions. Uh, we don't know why these uh, certain parameters have 
these values which uh, they have, and there is a huge hierarchy of the uh, parameters, for example, uh, local parameters. So they vary from uh, 10 to the minus 6 per electron, the lightest from uh, uh, fermions that get uh, the standard model, their masses from just coupling to the uh, Higgs field. Uh, from 10 to the minus 6 to almost exactly 1 for t core. And also mixing is also interesting because uh, again we have some uh, uh, big spread of the parameters. The, the, the smallest one is about 10 to the minus 3, uh, while the largest one is 1. And we quite have an addition the uh, phase, uh, uh, complex phase in the mixing uh, matrix, which is okay, it can be of the order of one. And all this wise uh, is uh, what, what we call this as uh, a clever, clever pu puzzle. Uh, in addition to uh, connection to the physics uh, with uh, standard model, we certainly uh, know that physics beyond the standard model exists, and uh, we can use uh, this flavor part just to check that, uh, to, to, try to, to try to find uh, something beyond the standard model. Uh, because uh, if we just study the uh, heavy mesons uh, experimentally, uh, we have a lot of measurements which, which should be connected to these certain parameters, which is too many for a fundamental theory, but uh, not, not too many to check that uh, everything uh, is the case of, for example, d mesons, d mesons, uh, is really can be uh, can be uh, done by this certain parameters because we have a lot of measurements. We have uh, now about 500 uh, decay modes for B mesons. Uh, we have about 200 decays of D mesons. No, it's not not on the measured measured branch fraction, but also our limits. Uh, and uh, a lot of phenomena uh, can be studied with the flavor flavor mesons. Uh, uh, in addition to just measuring bridge pressure, like CP relation, where we can we can uh, try to find new particles which which lie uh, at, at the mass scale uh, well uh, above the standard model scale. For example, these loops, uh, these loops of this this uh, annihilation of the mesons is sensitive to particles which uh, may be very heavy. In addition, we have uh, another interesting phenomenon in the flavor physics is the CP relation, which is just needed for uh, universe construction. And uh, up to now, we have only known source of CP relation, which comes from the flavor sector of the standard model. And we know that it's a little bit too small to explain the uh, present uh, status of universe, uh, but this is just the only known one. Which, which we really can measure experimentally. So, flavor physics uh, is related to three parts to, to the uh, still mysterious part, uh, uh, how they, this uh, many parameters produced in the standard model is uh, uh, related to cosmology, and uh, also uh, it's a way to search for physics beyond the standard model. Okay, so uh, I, I'll start with symmetries, which is an important part uh, for understanding of uh, the physics uh, in standard model and beyond. And uh, quantum field theories introduced uh, possibility for violation of this, uh, of this uh, new uh, symmetries, which were recognized uh, really only uh, last century. Uh, so three of them. This is parity violation, uh, the, the symmetry under changing of the uh, sign of uh, charge, and uh, the time sign free. Uh, and uh, okay, Let, let's start with, with uh, the, the simplest one, the parity violation. So we, we know that. Uh, parity is violated just because we know this from experiment. In, in the standard model, the parity violation is introduced by hand. We have no idea why it is so. 
uh, and we just need to uh, to put here that the uh, weak bosons are coupled only to left-handed fermions because we know this from experiment. And the experiments are here. We have uh, okay. If, if the symmetry is not violated, so it means that uh, we cannot distinguish by any experiments that uh, that uh, we have one universe and another universe which is uh, very weak. It means that it's mirror mirror uh, reflected, and we should have no experiments that can distinguish between these two possibilities. But in reality, we have. And uh, this was shown already more than 50 years ago that uh, the parity is violated within the weak process as much as possible. It's not just a small violation, it's, it's a maximum violation. Uh, and this is experiment. The first experiment uh, that, that shows this unambiguously, it's a good experiment where we have correlation between the spin of the nuclear that decay uh, we have bit the decay with the direction of electron. It's shown like here because we have uh, so this is time where uh, after after uh, the species of cobalt was uh, cooled down to 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 a very low temperature and with time uh, this polarization is vanishing because uh, the species is uh, uh, heated uh, and uh, after. After polarization vanishes, so we, we, we see constant uh, dependence, uh, and uh, when it's polarized, the uh, probability to emit electrons to this to this uh, direction is smaller if if the uh, polarization is low uh, up, 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 upward, and uh, it's uh, larger if, if the polarization is down. Uh, the similar experiment was done by Lederman, but not with nuclear, with uh, the QF of we, uh, we can just compare two possibilities uh, because we know that the pion moment, uh, pion spin is zero uh, and to conserve any momentum we have just two possibilities when uh, the spin of muon and, and neutrino are uh, opposite to the direction of light and uh, it's uh, uh, linear with direct light. And one, ex uh, one, one possibility is realized in nature, and another is, is not seen. Uh, this means that parity is violated just uh, 100%. And uh, the question, is it fundamental or not? Okay, I just try to illustrate this with this example. So we, we know that Coriolis forces are also parity violated, violating if we just consider them locally. So if we have some uh, one schedule that we live in this puddle, uh, it, it, and it, it, if it's sensitive to, to feel these correlative forces, uh, it will immediately conclude that there is a parity elevation because uh, there is some extra forces which is independent of uh, the direction of motion, always acts to the right, and uh, we can conclude that the parity is very But okay, it's it's uh, finally restored if we just look at, at, at all this picture, uh, not locally but from uh, from the universe. So if we know that uh, we believe in, in uh, rotating is uh, there is and part of the lives here, uh, and uh, in this case the forces always x to the right, and in uh, so hemispheres uh, it's also uh, it's always. Uh, Act to the left, it means that symmetry finally restored. And if we know that the standard model is not the theory of everything, it, it may be possible that uh, there is no just fundamental parity violation in theory, and this is just uh, the standard model is just uh, something like model where this uh, sketch one will lead. Uh, and our conclusion is no more. And uh, parity violation can be seen microscopically. <coughs> this was pointed out first by Jakob Zeldovich uh, actually 10 years before the uh, standard model was introduced. And uh, it, it's really, uh, this, this was a good idea. Uh, he assumed that uh, there should be some analog of the uh, charged 
charged uh, beta decay, uh, some neutral beta decay, and this again, this is just idea of z of z zero uh, that came to his to his mind uh, ten years before it was uh, stated in the standard model. And this uh, this uh, experiment was done only uh, twenty years after because it's it's very uh, subtle experiment. So you need to measure the rotation of uh, the light. Uh, by this very small value of, so this, this angle of rotation is very small. And this can happen in uh, uh, heavy atoms. Uh, you know that uh, th there are materials that can rotate the polarity of light, and it's okay, but they are molecular. The molecular has some, uh, some uh, uh, structure, and therefore it can rotate light. And if, if we just look at, at these materials in nature, there are two, two types of these uh, molecular molecules. Uh, they have left and right isomers. But for items, it, it's not possible. So if we have some uh, atoms that, that can do this, to rotate the uh, optical arrow for light, it means that we have parity relation. It was observed in Novosibirsk uh, this year. Uh, so, another symmetry uh, corresponds to the charge conjugation. But before we introduce charge conjugation, we should need to understand what is antimatter. It was introduced first by uh, Arthur uh, Schuster, 30 years before Dirac uh, introduced it theoretically using his famous Dirac equation. And uh, Schuster just used the idea of symmetries. This, this happens exactly after uh, Thomson uh, discovered electron, which is uh, negatively charged, and the idea of Schuster that uh, the, the nature should be symmetric, there should be another electron which is positively charged. And uh, Rowan in this direction, he uh, hypothesized that there should be anti atoms, uh, probably even uh, uh, solar systems, which consists, which is built of antimatter. And he understands that if uh, they need I mean, matter and antimatter, they should be uh, Then uh, Dirac really discovered that antimatter. He discovered this uh, theoretically, just uh, trying to solve the uh, many problems where, which appears, uh, many paradoxes which appears after uh, people try to uh, combine uh, quantum mechanics with special re relativity and uh, this is just one of one example that as a negative energy solution for scalar fields which appeared uh, when we tried uh, to combine uh, consists of negative energy and uh, Dirac tried uh, okay we, we failed to, to explain how, how to work with negative energy in the simplest case of scalar fields and Dirac tried a more complicated one uh, with fermions, and finally with fermions, we, uh, it's, it's really some fantastic idea. So you cannot solve the problem with uh, the simplest C field, uh, and he tried more, 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 more difficult field. And with this, uh, he find that he can guarantee stability of equation, uh, guarantee stability of nature, uh, even having these negative energy solutions, just by, by uh, introducing his uh, famous Dirac C, uh, which uh, all negative, all negative uh, particles is filled with, uh, is filled, and uh, there is no possibility uh, to uh, get energy by uh, jumping from high level to, to negative energy uh, of the solution. <coughs> and antimatter, so. Uh, in, in having this, we, we get antimatter. So we have uh, we have C uh, here, and electrons are like uh, this droplet above the C. But we have also some bubbles uh, under this under the C level, and if we, we can see that, that they are uh, very very symmetric. So we have uh, droplet above the C, and we have bubble under the C. They have the same energy uh, if you just measure this energy as a uh, distance to the sea level. So this way uh, he introduced uh, not only charge conjugation, not only uh, uh, 
term of um, uh, antiparticles, but also showed that particles and antiparticles are symmetric. They were finally found, and uh, it it's, uh, became not just a mathematical uh, thing, but a real thing after Anderson discovered uh, positrons in uh, cosmic rays. Okay, so we uh, we have, uh, according to Dirac, we have uh, anti antiparticles, which is just the charge conjugation states, and uh, we uh, for any particles we can introduce antiparticles. This is a negative, negative energy solutions. Uh, for some particles, uh, antiparticles and particles are, are the same. For example, for a photon, uh, and uh, if we just uh, this symmetric things means that uh, uh, th these particles and antiparticles should have uh, all, all uh, uh, characteristics uh, to be the same, like mass, spin, uh, but. Uh, all uh, except for charges. Charges should be just opposite. And uh, if we have really symmetry under charge conjugation, uh, we, uh, it means that there should be no experiment that uh, if we do it with particles or with antiparticles, uh, there should be the same results if parity is really, if the ch charge symmetry is really easy. Uh, and again, uh, in the same 1956, uh, when the parity violation was observed, uh, it's uh, simultaneously uh, means that this uh, this uh, uh, decays also violate charge conjugation symmetry uh, because uh, Lederman also made the experiment with uh, positive positive pions and negative pions and if you just have uh, see uh, symmetry applied to to these states uh, which we can see in the experiment we have this uh, this final state which is not seen. But before the Lederman experiments, uh, separity uh, violation was also introduced theoretically. It was done in Ida and uh, also in, in the United States, but a little bit later. So it was done by Jörg Jopan and Rudik, who uh, showed that if we, if we decay really violates P, uh, it should also result to the simulation just because uh, this this uh, scalar product of vector and uh, pseudo vector uh, is invariant under T violation, and therefore, if we believe that CPT theorem is valid uh, and T is conserved, then C parity should be also valid. And this is really so. So, uh, if we if we see that T parity is still uh, not violated by all experiments that were, were, were done at that time. And Landau introduced combined symmetry of uh, C and P simultaneously. Uh, so if we just look at the Lederman experiment again, uh, we can see that uh, this C is violated, P is also violated. But if we just go without the states from this to one, to, to, from this to this, uh, just under CP transformation, we have both a C experiment. And this idea also supports the idea of two component masses neutrino, because uh, if we have only this and this one, we cannot go uh, this way. We have, in, in the middle we have the non-existing part, but we go directly in this way. And Landau believes that this CP symmetry is very important because it restores the uh, uh, symmetry between matter and antimatter. Uh, so he believes that uh, to have no difference between matter and antimatter is nice. Uh, and only 10 years after, uh, it was recognized that uh, this CP relation is really very important for our universe. Uh, it was finally also observed, I mean CP relation. So it was observed by uh, these people get finally the Nobel Prize for this observation uh, when they find that the K long particles which uh, could not decay to CP even in final state uh, if CP relation uh, if there is no CP relation they observe that they do this so they, they observe they are very rare that uh, K long can decay to pi plus pi minus and the ratio 
uh, this is CP related and this is CP allowed state. The ratio is really tight, it's less than 1%. Uh, if we try to understand uh, how this can happen, uh, there are two ways. One is uh, if uh, CP even uh, CP odd final state, the CP, CP odd particle, uh, in the way before decay uh, converted to CP even final states, which finally decay without CP relation. It also can happen in the moment of the decay. So this is how we distinguish them. One is indirect, this one, and uh, decay uh, CP relating is just direct when uh, uh, CP. Uh, odd final state decay to, to CP even, uh, sorry, uh, C, CP uh, odd uh, particle decay to CP even final state. Uh, we know that in, in, in reality both exist, but uh, for the first uh, for the first 30 years after the observation of CP relation, only this was really measured. And this is the present PDG uh, value for the parameter epsilon, it's known very precisely. Uh, while uh, this one in direct is, uh, is also is, is, uh, very small compared to this one. So the ratio uh, of them is again about 10 to the minus 3. It was observed only about uh, uh, 10 years, uh, 15 years ago. Okay, so we have very tiny effect of CP violation. And uh, this uh, small effect finally resulted in, in the uh, really big, uh, this, this have a big result. So we, we, have, uh, we have our universe finally. Because uh, if, we, if there is no CP violation, uh, so we now should have equal number of matter and antimatter particles, uh, which in any case, we'll finally annihilate. So it means that we will have only only photons now, which will be very cold, and uh, there will be no us in this universe. And let's uh, try to understand how to put CP relation into uh, the standard model. And the idea is very simple. Uh, we need to have uh, charges uh, in weak decays, which are different if we if we have uh, just normal decay and uh, CP free decay, uh, to have them different, it's, it's the best way is to have them, them complex. In this case, they are not equal. Uh, in principle, this, this doesn't help to, to see any CP relation observables because uh, for decay rates, we we'll always have this square here. It means that if they are uh, if, if, if even they are complex, uh, their absolute value are, are the same, and uh, the probabilities of uh, any decay will be the same under a CP operator. Uh, but we can, we can uh, uh, introduce more, more complicated simply. We can believe that there are two amplitudes resulting to the same final state, for example, the decay of the KT mechanism to pi pi is driving. Uh, not by a single amplitude, but by two. If, if we have so, and uh, uh, and just try to, to do the same way, uh, we, we still fail. We have still uh, the sum of two amplitudes uh, have the same the same distance, the same uh, lengths here and here. But uh, helpful thing, if, if we have some extra amplitude which is not changed under CP uh, under CP uh, translation. Uh, for example, strong, strong phase can be uh, used as a reference, uh, reference phase. In this case, uh, different, okay, we have, we have, this is for particles, this is for antiparticle, and we, if we sum these two amplitudes, A and B, for particle, we have this length, and for antiparticle, it will be a different one. So, we have really uh, having complex, uh, complex charge, uh, uh, we uh, can really introduce CP relation. But we still don't know how to, to make the charges complex. And before uh, trying to do this, let's uh, understand how uh, in 1960 uh, the, uh, the 
the fermions uh, put into the charge currents. So we, we had a problem that was finally solved by Kabiba that uh, there are different different uh, couplings between uh, between leptons. For example, uh, when we have muon decay, we have a G fermi corresponding to this two uh, to, to, uh, coupling constants and uh, propagator of W. In case of neutrons, it's very similar, but for uh, strange particles, uh, this constant is very small. And uh, Kabiba saw this uh, just first, firstly, just st studied all uh, strange particles decays and found that for all strange particles, the weak constant is the same. Uh, and if we just look at uh, uh, the values which uh, he uh, uh, take from experiments, uh, we have uh, some uh, so ideas that, that uh, up, up quark is coupled not to D quark or C quark, but to some mixture of them. And these coefficients are so that the, uh, the total squared, uh, if, if you just add squared of them, you have unity. So the probability is up, is add up to one. Uh, and it's convenient to, to say that alpha is cosine of Kabiba and then B, B beta is uh, sine of uh, uh, the angle. Uh, so this successfully explains everything, all the case of strange particles, except for uh, one uh, when K and DK to put nodes. Because it's, uh, this box diagram here uh, is divergent. And it means that this DK should, should have a very, very big rate. However, experimentally, it was very small. So this problem was solved in 1970 by Glacier Leopolis in Miami. Uh, this is so-called G mechanism. Uh, then they postulated the existence of the force quarks that are used to cancel this divergence. And uh, this idea helped to restore some uh, symmetry between, uh, between uh, leptons and quarks, because we have finally both four leptons and uh, four quarks, and also symmetry between up and down. Okay, now uh, we have already standard model, we believe in 1970, and uh, if we have standard model, uh, we uh, need to, to understand how this mixing can, can appear. So in the standard model, we have, in, we have to introduce some scalar fields to account for a broken uh, SO2 symmetry, and uh, if we leave here, the symmetry is broken. But then how this uh, scalar field is, is coupled to the fermions? Uh, according to Gelman totalitarian uh, principle, so if everything which is not forbidden is compulsory, that means that uh, they should, uh, should be coupled. And the coupled in, in, uh, there is no actual restriction how, how to couple fermions to scalars. Because when, when we work with gauge fields, and couple fermions to gauge, we have just a single constant, the gauge constant. And uh, here we have, we, we can introduce uh, just, if we have two generations, we can introduce just two arbitrary matrices, matrices which are, there is no idea why they, why they uh, get the values as, as we have this experiment. And uh, if we have, if we have these matrices, uh, uh, we can just try to diagonalize it uh, because we want to, to work in the physical basis when uh, particles have uh, mass and lifetimes. And uh, this means that we need to find, uh, we need to, to diagonalize these matrices and to find uh, uh, the eigenstates uh, of, this, of this mass and range. And this can be done using just uh, some special, specially tuned uh, uh, four matrices, which are unitary, and we, we can just come to this to this one. Uh, if we do this, you, you can say that uh, we have in, in, in the beginning we have two arbitrary complex matrices two by two. Uh, finally, we got uh, only two matrices which are diagonal and real. Uh, so we somewhere put a lot of parameters, but uh, fortunately most of these parameters are not physical because uh, some of them are just related to the question of uh, convention, how we uh, 
good uh, works to how we ascribe works to some generations. Uh, however, only one translation uh, it became physical. This is it corresponds to uh, to rotation of left-handed works, and uh, not each of them, but their composition is physical. And uh, this single composition results uh, this this product of these two rotation matrices will uh, will enter to the Lagrangian part uh, corresponding to the couple of uh, left-handed uh, parents uh, to double double. Uh, okay, this is home, and we go closer. Uh, so this is our weak uh, ch charged parent weak term in the standard model. So this is. A, a matrix which is unitary, and this is the most general way how this matrix can be uh, written. Uh, and what I'd like to show on this slide is that we can just explicitly check that uh, finally this matrix has only one real parameter. Uh, let's let's do, uh, let's try to do this. So we have this matrix, uh, and why not to remove uh, face of this element just by rotating deep work? If we do this, uh, nothing happens with, with all other terms in Lagrangian because in all other terms except for this one, uh, deep works will always enter with together with uh, D con uh, charge conjugate. So this means that this uh, this phase will be cancelled in any other terms. So we can first uh, make this uh, this term real, and then we can do the same with this one. If if we do with deep work, this two changed. Then we do the same with C core, uh, rotate C core. It means that uh, this can be also done real, and this also change a little bit. After that, let, let's do the same with S core. Finally, we have these three elements which are real, and you, you can after that check that, that the, uh, the fourth ones also became real. It's, it's simple. Yeah, actually, uh, we, we removed three three parameters from four parameters here. It's, it's obviously that finally we have real matrix. So it means that with two generation we have no idea how to get uh, complex charges. Okay, so our matrix is now like uh, this one, this is Kabibu matrix. And uh, is it really not a trivial idea just to try the same thing with three generation? Uh, it was done by Kabayash in Moscow, who, who showed that uh, if you have three by three instead of two by two, uh, there is an extra extra uh, small uh, extra phase that makes the matrix uh, to be complex, and uh, it cannot be absorbed to any any of uh, uh, phase uh, definition. So, if you think that this idea is trivial, just uh, just look at the history. Uh, because uh, the, this uh, paper appears 18 years after after CP violation was observed. Uh, this means that and, and this uh, CP violation was the biggest problem uh, this time. It means that a lot of people just trying uh, to solve this. And finally, only Kabir and Kabayashi, uh, sorry, Kabayashi and Maskawa uh, find this idea. Uh, okay, the standard model with uh, two generation was completed uh, in 19. Uh, 70, so it means that uh, only two years after Jim mechanism. But still, uh, even after the paper were published, it, it was just not uh, recognized by other people that if it can be true theory. Because we have, we have no citation of this paper for succeeding two years after publication, and it's growing only after really discovering of uh, the third generation, which happens first Tau Lepton in the public sector in 19. Uh, 75 and uh, big big works was absorbed uh, was first absorbed in 1977. So uh, it, it took several years for people to recognize that this idea can be fruitful, and only after 30 years of study, uh, it's finally accepted as a true theory, which uh, means that uh, Kabayashi and Moscow get the Nobel Prize for this trivial idea only 35 years after they suggested. Uh, okay, 
what, what, what is done with, with, with uh, Matrix, Matrix, which is uh, 3 by 3 now. So it it's, uh, has this, this form, and uh, if you look at the uh, charge kinds uh, term uh, in the Lagrangian, it's, it's uh, of this, this shape. And Kobayashi and Moscow parameterize their matrix as, as here. Now we re-parameterize re it. Just because of in the time of Kobayashi and Moscow, it was known which uh, it was known only one parameter, this one. Have you been? All other would were just no idea of how large uh, they, they are. Now we know that uh, uh, these parameters are the smallest one, but uh, if, if we attribute uh, this weak phase to parameters, uh, okay. So if I take it to this corner, uh, we just cannot see this face because uh, this, this two are, will be all, again all, 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 almost uh, real uh, because this is big, this is small. So we find an attribute uh, to, to this one, and in this case, the, this rectangle uh, 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 is big. Otherwise, with this parameterization, it's very small. So we just difficult to see that there is a security And uh, this is some history. I don't like to talk too much about this. This is history of uh, physics, uh, flavor physics after the Kobayashi Moscow and that was introduced to the theory. And CP violation is possible with Kobayashi Moscow. So it doesn't mean that it's obligatory should, should, should exist because this is the necessary conditions which should be uh, satisfied uh, by nature uh, to produce a relation using conversion of Scalanza. So we should have all masses of quarks to be different. Uh, okay. All up, up type quarks should, should have different masses. All down type quarks should have different masses. And in addition, there should be, there should be, uh, the, the matrix should be really complex material. And this is parameterized by the so-called uh, Yabskov determinant which is shown here, and in the standard model, it's extremely small. It's 10 to the minus 5. It can be of the order of 1. But in, in, in fact, it's only, only, only this value that we have. And we also observe hierarchy of these uh, matrix elements, which are, this is just uh, absolute values of these uh, nine elements, and they, they are like here. So the, the matrix of Kobayashi Moscow is almost diagonal, with uh, almost one here, and very small parameters, of, very small of diagonal parameters, especially between the first and the, the third generation. The mixing is, is extremely small. Uh, OK, so we have another parameterization of the Kobayashi Moscow, which is uh, quite convenient. It's, uh, it's used uh, that uh, it's almost diagonal, and uh, it's, it was introduced by Wolfenstein, but it's approximate. It's not, uh, it's not uh, okay, we just take this one, we have some, uh, some other, so it's just series on uh, parameter lambda, which is about 0.2. And uh, if we use this par parameterization, it's, it's very uh, useful, it's very illustrative. That's why it's used. So it's, it's reflects that uh, there is a strong coupling between one generation, within one generation, uh, and it's smaller uh, if we cross from one generation to another one, and it's extremely small if we go from from the first generation to, uh, from the first generation to the third generation. And uh, doing this, we we can. Uh, Introduce the imaginary part to these corners, when, which has the smallest one. But at the same time, the phase, CP relation phase, will be the largest with this parameterization. So uh, we have these two elements, which are uh, which are not real, and they they correspond to the transition from the the uh, third generation to the first one. Okay, so we, we have Kobayashi Moscow matrix like this one. So this is just uh, showing how, uh, how uh, what is the hierarchy of the matrix elements. And we put uh, five is here. Uh, 
important thing is uh, unitarity. Uh, okay, the Hawaiian spell matrix is unitary. It means that there are nine uh, unitarity conditions. Six of them corresponds uh, to uh, triangles because uh, if, you, if, you, if we have this expression, it's equal to zero, sum equal to one. And we have uh, six unitarity, tra uh, unitarity uh, conditions like, like this one, and we can build unitarity triangle. Uh, which means that, okay, let, let this will be one side of the triangle is a complex plane. This is another one, this is a third one. All together, this reactor should, should go to zero. And they produce triangle. And from these six triangles, only two uh, are not squashed. Uh, four others are just almost, uh, they have three, si three sides which are uh, of different order. So uh, two, two are big and the, uh, the third one is, is extremely small. But for, for two of them, uh, the, all three sides of the power the same order if we, uh, the same order of lambda. Yeah? And these triangles are important because uh, uh, we can just try to check this unitary uh, uh, conditions experimentally. This is the most important one, which, which will be used uh, in my next lectures uh, to, to uh, check that the Kabayashi Maskawa model is uh, true theory. And uh, this is our triangle. And it's quite convenient to have uh, to have this side equal to one. We just normalize uh, two other sides by the base of this triangle. And in this case, uh, this point corresponds to rho and delta parameters of Wolfenstein. Uh, let me just uh, remind you what is rho and delta. Yeah, this is two parameters which are of the order of one, uh, and uh, we using uh, using this uh, convention for unitary triangle, uh, we have this apex. This position of this apex is uh, this is coordinates of this apex. So uh, okay, so next lecture I will talk about experimental study of this unitarity triangle. And uh, today I will just summarize that uh, I hope very much that you uh, believe me that the uh, flavor, flavor part of the standard model is really the most mysterious uh, part because if we, and it, it comes from the, uh, from the uh, coupling between the scalar field and, and uh, terminal fields because in all other parts of the standard model, there is, there is no, no freedom to, to, to uh, introduce parameters. So if we, if we have just three fermion of Lagrangian, uh, there is no free parameters at all. It's massless. Uh, and if fermions or scalars couple to good range fields, uh, there is no extra parameters except for coupling constants of, uh, of, of the uh, these gauge groups. And uh, because if you have non abelian group, the charges can be only 0 or 1. They are fixed by self coupling of the non abelian uh, gauge uh, fields. Uh, abelian charges, uh, uh, we have the freedom to extract different charges for electron, for example, quarks uh, that can be uh, 1 or 10. But uh, this uh, Finally, it's uh, determined that all charges uh, should be somehow related because we, we would like to have cancellation of triangle anomaly. And this means that the sum of all charges should be zero. But uh, in, the, in the sectors of coupling of uh, you cover of uh, scalar fields to fermions, there is complete freedom. Fortunately, fortunately as I showed you already, this matrix, which are almost, uh, which are just arbitrary, many parameters from this matrices are not physical. They can be removed. 
but still many, many exist, uh, many, many remain. And uh, we don't know how, what is the origin of this, of these matrices. And uh, they're arbitrary, and we, we know that it, it's really so. So it means that uh, there is no, all of them are not zero. So everything which is possible to introduce in this matrix this is introduced by nature. But uh, after that, uh, there is still some structure of this constant. And this is uh, everything finished. Yeah? And uh, it's, it's the most interesting part, because uh, if we if, if, if they were, were just arbitrary, it will be one thing. But they're not only arbitrary, but they have some structure, which is, which is seen, but which is not explained. Okay, that's all. We get clear of what is happening. Next questions, please. Are you ready for ski competition? Brains are already there. <laughs> Anybody has any idea why these numbers are such like they are? I think everybody can solve yes. this by, by tomorrow, yes. actually. We have one. We start the question. Well, uh, we mainly it's from another field, uh, but uh, we just saw the separate condition for barren asymmetry. Uh, and uh, uh, can it be that uh, the barren asymmetry could be explained just by CP violation in the count decays. Oh, oh there is essentially there is a need in some new field. Yeah, the so with the standard cosmological model, we can just try to calculate uh, which asymmetry we will have now if we have only a standard model, uh, standard model uh, source of CP asymmetry. And it's uh, 10 orders of magnitude smaller than we observe now. So it means that there should be some extra sources for CP violation in, in the theory of everything okay, in nature. So we are just trying to find them experimentally. And you mean the value of the phase is too small or just the, anyway it's not enough? Uh, I think that uh, not enough is, is uh, this value, uh, K. This this uh, Yarnskov determinant, which is 10 to the minus 5, which is a measure of the CP relation in the standard model, is too small. But if it would be bigger, then if it will it would be bigger, yeah. 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 Do you know any uh, process or uh, theory that can predict the process? That can uh, violate, uh, that can cause a CP violation via the strong uh, interaction. Interaction. Uh, you mean the strong, a strong CP violation? Yeah. Yeah, because the weak, uh, weak phase of the CP violation is too small. Uh, the LHCP experiment tried to measure it, and it's not enough to be okay with the um, Sakharov condition. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if this question is about a strong CP relation, we, we know this from experiments that it's, it's uh, either absent at all or extremely small. So, uh, the, the strong CP relation is expected by theory, just because we expect that uh, in the, uh, in the strong uh, gauge Lagrangian, we should have uh, some extra term corresponding to CP relation. It's appear from uh, the idea that vacuum, uh, uh, the boundary conditions for the QCD vacuum uh, should not be just a simple, simple one, because uh, there is no time uh, between different parts of, of universe to uh, to fix uh, this boundary condition, and it, it should appear. And this is a called so-called strong CP problem, uh, why uh, it's not seen experimentally. So from experiment we know that there is no CP. A strong CP violation. Uh, if it would be, probably it can can be helpful for uh, explaining the uh, matter-antimatter 
meta antimatter asymmetry in the universe. But it's, we know this from experiment that it's, it's, not, it's not here. Because this is just uh, uh, in the strong Lagrangian, uh, this is just a single term which uh, explicitly violates CP and uh, it's small. We can calculate from this term uh, uh, some observables, for example, decay uh, of uh, eta, CP relating to the case of eta, or electric dipole moment for neutron. And uh, we know that it's, it's extremely small. 